Hi everyone, it's me, Tim. It's Friday Fun Day, so I wanted to pull something out of my idea book about galactic coordinates. This was a system that I made years ago, decades ago. Uh, it's in my first book, which means it was at least, it's at least 15 years old. It's, I needed a system or I wanted a system to name stellar systems, suns, planets, moons. I pulled this out of the idea book about eight years ago when we started working on the Outer Worlds because I thought, well, maybe I finally have a chance to use this. Didn't end up using it. We went with another system. Um, and then ironically, it never came up in the game. So the system for... I for cataloging stellar systems in the outer worlds hasn't yet hit lore. I'd tell you what it is, but since they're making sequels, maybe it will end up being pulled out of the design documents and going into the game. So it may end up being lore at some point, but it's not this system. So let me explain how this system works and why I liked it. <clears throat> so what you do, we're going to, we're going to come up with a way of naming every single star in the Milky Way. So we start with our alphabet. It's 26 letters. Pull out all the vowels, A, E, I, O, and U. Pull out Y as well. I know it can be a consonant, sometimes a vowel. I'm going to use it as a vowel. This gives us 20 consonants. Great. Now take the Milky Way and break it into a 20 by 20 by 20 grid. So each of those grids is now identifiable, the X, Y, and Z axis of that grid is now identifiable with a single consonant. Now break that, each one of those cubes, and they're not exactly cubes, um, I'm going to say grid, because the Milky Way, while it's kind of square when you look at it top down, it's kind of thin. So these cubes will probably be the same thing. They'll probably be square on their X and Y, and then their Z height won't be nearly as tall. But anyway, take each one of those cubes in that grid, in that 20 by 20 by 20 grid, and break it up into another 20 by 20 by 20 grid. And then each one of those sub cubes, break it up again into a 20 by 20 by 20 grid. This will yield 20 to the ninth power of those flattened cubes. This is over 500 billion cubes. Well, why did we need to do that? There are over 100 billion stars in the Milky Way. Since each one of those cube sub-sub cube grids can be identified with nine consonants. Three of them give you the bigger cube, three more give you the subcube, three more give you the sub-subcube. This means that those smallest cubes on average contain about half a, on average contain half of a star. So on average, every other one contains a star. Now this is the average. So some of them may have no stars in them whatsoever. Some of them may have a few thousand depending on the density of stars. Also because of the way the density of the Milky Way, it's much denser inside than out. You don't have to lay the cubes out in a uniform way. You could have more cubes towards the center and less towards the outer. Any way you wanna do it's fine. What this means though, is when you find a star, you can use those nine letters of the cubits of the sub sub cubits located in, combined with some vowels, to name that star. What's cool is those nine letters are always kept in order. So you know that they form the galactic coordinate for that star. Just knowing the consonants, you know where in the Milky Way this star will be. Vowels can be inserted into the, that consonant pattern to come up with a name that's pronounceable. And by the way, some letter pairs sound good together. Um, and so you can have rules for not inserting vowels maybe in between a C and an H, because that's a CH, or between an S and a T, which is a ST. So you can decide where vowels go in. You can sometimes put them in there, but I would say leave them alone so they it, it sounds good to your ear. Also... If there's more than one star at that coordinate, you just put in a different vowel pattern and you get a different name. 
the consonants are in the same order, so you still know where that star is located, but they have different vowels, so you can separate the two stars from each other. Let me do an example. Let's say that you're looking at a star in a sub sub cube, which is identified in the with the three cube coordinates of G W N C V Q P L T. I picked these at random just to see if I could do it. So I could insert vowels in there to come up with the name Gown Kavik Pelt. It's not beautiful, but it's pronounceable. Now let's say there's a second star in that subcube. You can put a different set of vowels in there and call it Gonic Vic Pluti. Sounds weird. Maybe you guys can do better. Maybe you're going to get better ways of inserting vowels into the base name, the base consonant name. That sounds a lot more pronounceable. So knock yourself out with that. Anyway, once you have the name of the star, the planets are just numbered based on their orbit. And moons are lowercase letters based on their orbit. So the third moon of the fourth planet of Gaon Kavik Pelt would be Gaon Kavik Pelt 4C. Now you can make extensions for binary systems, binary planets, binary moons by just adding a stroke number. If there's a bin if, if Gaon Kavik Pelt is a binary star, you can have Gaon Kavik Pelt stroke one and Gaon Kavik Pelt stroke two. If there are binary planets inside the system, you might have Gaon Kavik Pelt 4 stroke 1 and Gaon Kavik Pelt 4 stroke 2. If there's a binary moon, which I'm not sure is orbitally possible, but maybe it is, you can have Gaon Kavik Pelt 4C stroke 1 and Gaon Kavik Pelt 4C stroke 2. So it works. What I love about this is just being given the name of a star or planet or moon. You now know where in the galaxy that star is located, and if it's a planet or a moon, where to find it in that system. You just take the name, remove the vowels, and you have the galactic co coordinate and the orbitals. Now, I really think this is an interesting idea. I'm not sure what I'd do with it. I'm wondering if I use it, if I ever turn my space game maybe into an open world, open world, open galaxy, exploration game maybe i'll use this or a variant maybe you can think of something better um there's a whole bunch of ways you can do this so one reason i wanted to throw it out there is to ask people well what what ideas do you have for naming star systems remember whatever system you come up with has to work for a hundred billion stars because that's about how many there is in the milky way and there are galaxies that are far bigger so you need to be able to come up with a system that can possibly be extended. I mean, for a bit bigger galaxy, we could add another layer of grid on mine, and instead of nine consonants, it's 12 consonants. So there's a lot of ways of doing this, and I'm curious what you guys can think of. Anyway, I thought you would like that for a fun Friday.